It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to another edition of the Daily Dog. I am thankful that you are hanging out with me today because it is a Friday. And that means that we are going back to another long and excellent uh, musical selection for us to dive in and listen to today. And I am excited because today we are going back to the band Yes. And the song that we are going to be doing today is the Revealing Science of God. So I have to tell you, like a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, over on our Patreon, we did an extended Play Lounge episode that featured Yes. The way that we do it over there, we have two uh, tiers or two rounds of polling. And uh, the first round is band against band. So Yes won against four other bands. And then for the second round of that poll, we put up five different albums by Yes. And uh, Fragile won out, so I listened to the entire Fragile album. You can hear that over on my Patreon. But it just barely <laughs> beat out Tales from Topographic Oceans. And I got to tell you that listening to Fragile in its entirety in one sitting and doing a reaction to it uh, was much less daunting than the prospect of listening to the entire double album of Tales from Topographic Oceans. But... Uh, it's been on my mind since then, and I thought, you know, I really need to get into some of the music on that album. I have not listened to any of it yet. So that is why we are doing just side one today, a little 20-minute track known as The Revealing Science of God. So uh, on this side one uh, from Tales from Topographic Oceans, it was their sixth album uh, that was released in 1973. Uh, each of the four sides of this double album are single, long songs. Um, and it is a concept album that is based on uh, Hindu texts. And I believe that John Anderson was really into some of those texts uh, during this time. Uh, apparently, the song was uh, originally even longer than uh, what we're going to hear. Originally, it was like 28 minutes long, but they had to cut it just so they could fit it on an album, right? Um, today we're going to be listening to the Stephen Wilson remix of this classic studio album. It was released in 2016. Um, the musicians that are playing for us today are John Anderson on lead vocals, harp, and percussion, Steve Howe on the guitars, electric sitar, and backing vocals, uh, Chris Squire on the bass and backing vocals, Rick Wakeman is on the keyboards, and Alan White is on the drums. He had uh, replaced uh, Bill Bruford uh, the year before. So I'm going to try something as we do this today, y'all. Uh, one of the drawbacks of me doing reactions where I like to, to talk alongside with the music is that when it's music that I have not really heard before that I'm largely unfamiliar with, I don't know when to stop the music, This is which is why I tend to, to just find little spots and just talk through it, right? Uh, so I get into trouble sometimes because I stop the music at a place that I really shouldn't stop it. So I have found today this Stephen Wilson remix that is available to us in five parts. And I've done this in my extended play lounge, uh, but where I set this up in a playlist so that the music will automatically stop at certain points. And I enjoy doing this because it allows me to know that uh, pre-approved stopping points have already been programmed into this. So I don't need to worry about, am I stopping it right in the middle of where a great solo is going to happen or something like that? And then I kind of ruin the experience. So that is what is happening uh, as we go on through this. Uh, the other thing that I will say as I get my headphones ready is that normally... On a, on a Friday, I bring out a good old cocktail to enjoy with you all. Well, since we are doing the uh, Revealing Science of God, and since, we, uh, since it worked so well last week, if you were with me last Friday for our focus episode, uh, you will recall my little pipe here. So uh, we're going to uh, go to a little herbal supplementation here, y'all. And uh, hopefully, this will help us out as we listen to a little revealing science of God by Yes. So let's let's wait no longer. Let's get down to it. This is the revealing of science of God by Yes. Here we go. Right into it. 
confusions of wonder. Ooh. In moments hardly seem forgotten. That's a B. Colored in pastures of chance dancing leaves, cast spells of challenge, amused but real in thought. It's almost like it's based in chant. But not chant. I've studied a lot of chant. At least I've studied a lot of Western chant. This may be based in Eastern religious chant. What instrument is that? It's like a B suspended chord. They haven't changed chords yet. But it's building. As the links spin our endless caresses for the freedom of life everlasting. There's the classic yes sound. They went to E. Steve's hanging out on those sevenths, some ninths, some open voicings. Of course I'm drawn to the bass sound. You know, there's nothing else that sounds like Chris Wire, it seems like. But I'm also drawn to the way that the drums are sounding. The snare just sounds just fat, just lovely. Listen to that. It's the same motive. Cool. The spaciousness of it is just uh, exhilarating. pre-approved stopping points but I am wanting to go right along to the next one so let's uh, pick it up here is the next part I don't think I'm going to try to spend much time trying to parse the actual lyrics that John Anderson is singing here for specific meaning. I think it's uh, not worth the brain power to try to do that. I think I've learned my lesson. They got back to E. What happened to this song we once knew so well? Okay. One. That's an E. Then a major F sharp chord goes to, uh, to the A chord. Love the 
the ambiance sound that he gets with the with the guitar, with that sort of delayed attack. The future poised with the splendor just begun. The light we were as one and crowded to curtains of liquid into sound. And for a moment, when our world had filled the skies, magic turned our eyes to feast. And for a moment, when our world had filled the skies, magic turned our eyes to feast on the treasure and set for our strange device. I think he's talking in general about um, um, our attachment to mystery um, and our mysticism sort of being misplaced, misdirected, or abused even. section okay huh. we must have waited all our lives for this moment what happened to wonders we once knew so well did we forget what happened right we lose the wonder and curiosity of a child's eyes we get cynical right Disagreed at where a snare kit should have been. <laughs> oh. Boy, they're staying rooted in that chord for a while. You know, in a lot of these prog songs, they're just churning through progressions. Uh, but they're, that opening on B uh, was was pretty lengthy, and then this sort of extended little section it's sort of just rising motives all over an E major sonority huh there's that motive comes back over different chords it's a lovely little motive though Mellotron making those string sounds. Okay, and that's the end of this little part two spot. Y'all, so far, uh, it's not uh, disappointing at all. It's really, really, really lovely. Uh, off we go to uh, my third little part here. Uh, let's go. Fast, you tell me. But I just can't believe that I can feel. They move fast, they tell me. 
but I just can't believe that I can feel it. You get this ascending line in the bass. Great effect. Interesting color. Getting all the wars we do not need, or so it seems so clearly. Sheltered with our passion, clearly to be whole. The group was the town. Two and three. So they're in three for a second, and they go back to four. Is that ascending line in the bass? I think it starts on D. Somewhere different now. Ah. Oh. Down by half step. So that means G sharp. Right, this part. So that's minor third. It's like over a G sharp minor chord. B to G sharp, G, A. That's interesting. Taking up space down there. I still think that's one of the more unique things about the classic yes sound is how big and bodacious that bass is paired with John's singing color. It's like, where else are you going to get that? spots gonna end. Wow, I am enjoying myself, y'all. We are gonna move on to uh, the fourth little part here. Off we go. Ooh, turns minor. Almost sounds like timpani. Man, those drums are mic'd well. There's that sitar in the background. see it from the beginning. From the beginning old people feel it that's what they're saying old people feel it. 
Sounds like it's it. Hey. That's what they're saying. Move over. Move over, glory. The sons of old fighters past. There's a little motive. I like that sound. A little bit of a different take on it than before. Softer take on it. like an Amen Cadence. There it is. An Amen Cadence in E. Speaking of Amen Cadences, now it sounds like we're in a Western church with an electric guitar. <laughs> Sounds like a Bach hymn, almost. Oh. That pass off from the organ with the synth to the electric guitar wasn't quite seamless, as seamless, I think, as they would have wanted. Where are we going next, y'all? This little part's gonna stop here, I think. I think we got just one, one, one little part left. Oh, that stops. Where are they headed? Where are they headed? Where are they headed? I can't wait to conclude the last little part. Here we go, y'all. They move fast. Ooh. They tell me. But I just can't. Boy, it's a reusage of of lyric and melody, but under completely new chords. A course towards a universal season. these parts coming back here towards the end. It gives the entire uh, piece cohesion that it otherwise wouldn't have. There's that big E chord. Yeah, there's the major two. But it goes to four. Not a classical thing to do, right? If this is a major one chord, then that's a major two, a five of five, but it goes to four instead of five. Same key as before. And they're gonna, that's so cool. They're gonna 
end on the dominant. They've been in E. But remember where they started? They started with this chant stuff on on B, right? Before it resolved to E, and now they're just holding out on a what I would say a dominant sort of extension and hearkening back to that chant stuff. went to E at the end and it resolved and it resolved oh me Whew. wonderful 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 you know uh I I probably should have something inspiring to say about uh tying together all of the elements and and making some sense of John's lyrics and I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Uh it definitely is spiritual though, you know. And I think that um you know some folks let me say this. Some folks have uh mentioned to me don't waste your time trying to 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 parse the specific meanings of of John's text. A lot of times the words are put there for their poetic uh, placement and for the vowel sounds and the and the consonant sounds that happen almost like he's playing his instrument with language that's not designed to be actual language right uh, but in some instances I think we can uh, uh, like divest ourselves from being like just right in the midst of it uh, and, and look at it from a little bit of a further uh, way away you seekers of the truth, accepting that reason will relive and breathe and hope and chase and love for you and you and you is what they say at the end here. And um, I think that they're talking about it being, uh, you know, connecting uh, it with the world and being content and all that sort of stuff is a practice more than anything else. It takes practice. Uh, in other words, it takes intention. It's what we do uh you know that we then become good at or we become accustomed to it becomes a practice uh for instance like you know 20 years ago 30 years ago when i was in uh, high school and undergrad i studied german that was one of my main uh, uh languages that i studied if you ask me to have a conversation in german uh, with someone right now, I don't think I could do it. And the reason why is because I'm out of practice. I have forgotten a lot of the vocabulary. Some of the grammar stuff still, I think, is ingrained in there. But, you know, I'd have to relearn. I'd have to get back into a practice of doing that. And, you know, one of the uh, reasons I think why I do pretty well at doing this you know, uh, calling out some chords, listening to progressions and trying to make some sense of it is because it is something that I do most days and have done most days for the last decade plus um, as a teacher and as a working musician. You know, so you become good at the things that you intentionally spend your time doing. And they're just saying, uh, you know, uh, I read this part. I must, uh, I'll, I'll, um, I'll end this this way. Uh, they say, uh, uh, the song is about the dawn of light, thought, our power, and of love to the creation and beginning of all the good things which bring happiness to our lives. That these wonderful forces seem to have been lost by the human race through their own negligence. And the negligence, I think, is why I'm tapping into uh, making it intentional or an intentional practice. Uh, these things, uh, cluing into the light around us to, um, um, like embracing our, um, our own good things about us and, uh, and trying to, uh, be focused on those things. It becomes a practice. Meditation is a practice. Yoga becomes a practice. And the more you do it, the more you start to have your body and mind react and help you make decisions that are in that space and not in something that's negative or destructive, right? Because we actually just spend the time doing it, right? It's the fake it till you make it thing, right? If you fake it for long enough, then you actually are good at what at, uh, what you're trying to fake yourself through. It's like me trying to do video editing, <laughs> y'all. You do it enough times, you get pretty decent at it. 
So uh, I think that's what they're calling us to do, you know, to to focus on these uh, these positives, light and love and hope and acceptance and forgiveness and uh, and all these things that uh, that take intention to do. And then just by the act of doing it, I think, is what John is telling us. That overarching thing, uh, if we do it with intention, then it can make specific uh, differences in each one of us according to where we all personally are with our own biases and our own life experiences. So, oh, maybe I did have something to say. Fun stuff. Y'all, it has been a an absolutely wonderful week. I have loved all of our selections this week, and I'm looking forward to even more next week. So I will uh, I will send you off. Mm. That takes longer to do than than uh, than taking a little sip of of uh, an adult beverage, but I will send you all off with my best wishes, and I will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.